Hello everybody and welcome. So let's have a look at this to start off where we have some information regarding a triangle here. The points uh, 4, 3, negative 2, 1, 1, 6, the vertices are triangle. As you can see, I've sketched it down here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the coordinates of A prime, B prime, C prime with the image of A, B, C after a reflection over the x-axis. So as you recall, reflection over the x-axis is pretty straightforward here, right? Reflections over the x-axis, what they do, the given the fact that this is the x and the y-axis here, right? So we reflect over the x-axis, we know that in this case the y-coordinate flips, but the x-coordinate remains the same here. So it makes sense for us to do this here. So the y-coordinate is going to flip, but the x-coordinate is going to remain the same. So a prime here, y-coordinate flips, so it becomes, but the x-coordinate remains the same, so we get 4, negative 3 here. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that. Here's a prime. B prime here is going to be, again, negative 2 remains the same, but the 1 flips, so it becomes a negative 2, negative 1 here. So here's B prime. And C prime here is going to be 1, negative 6, right? So it's going to flip down here. And now our triangle is in blue here. We can see that we have a rather nice looking triangle like such. So this is the reflection over here. Now, we want to find the coordinates of the vertices of a prime, b prime, a double prime, b double prime, c double prime. Uh, the image of this after a reflection of the line x equals 1. Now remember that x equals 1 is a vertical line here, right? x equals 1. Sorry, x equals negative 1, even better. It's like this. So it's this green line here. So here's x equals negative 1, parallel to the y-axis. So now it's just a matter of counting what's going on here. So for instance, we can take a look at this. A double prime here, we can see that this point 4, negative 3 is going to be what appears to be 5 units away from the mirror, so it's going to go another 5 in the opposite direction. So in this case, it's going to go 5 here and then 5 over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have A double prime here, we can see that it's moved over in that direction here. So A to A double prime, this is 5 units here, this is going to be 5 units here. So it's 5 to the left of negative 1, so that means it's negative 6, negative 3 here, right? We can see that. Similarly, we can do the same thing for B double prime. B is over here, 1 to the left, so now we're going to move 1 to the right here. So it's going to be negative 1 plus 1, or 0. So it's going to be 0, comma negative 1, so B double prime is now here. Okay, And then C double prime is the same idea here. C prime is 2 units away here, so it's going to be 2 units away from the uh, mirror. And on the other side, so it's going to be C double prime is going to be over here. It's going to be at negative 3, comma negative 6. And now we can see that our triangle looks something like this here. Alrighty. So if we take a look at what's going on here, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that in this situation, our triangle has undergone a couple of transformations here. So the most important part about this is that the black triangle actually goes directly to the red triangle. The blue triangle is just sort of an intermediary thing here. But the black triangle and the blue triangle, sorry, the black triangle and the red triangle here are images in the pre-image and image respectively. So note that in this situation here, we're gonna be doing multiple transformations at once. So notice how in this situation here, we did this transformation and without it, so we transformed the black triangle into the blue one by reflecting over the x-axis and without even giving it so much as a breath, we then use that, the blue triangle, as the pre-image for the next portion, which is the other, which yields us the red triangle here. So we're basically taking two transformations and putting and it kind of applying them in sequence here. So this, we refer to this as what is known at here as composition. So we can talk about this idea of what is known as composition here. So we talk about this idea of composition and transformations. It's a combination of two more transformations occurring in sequence here. So for instance, we're going to have a point, let's say here's our point x comma y here. The first thing we did was we reflected over the x-axis. So we can write it like this here. This is our reflection over the x-axis. And then after that, we reflected it over the line x equals negative 1. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's going to be x equals negative 1 here. Now note that we're going to be writing it something like this here. So the notation that we're going to use for composition is something like this here. So we can see that we have our two things here like so, and then this symbol here. You can think of this symbol, you know, it's, think of it as a raised dot, raised hollow dot here. So in this case, we can talk about this as composed onto, composed on, or following. Okay, so x is the reflection of the line x equals negative 1 follows the reflection of the x-axis here. So that actually gives us a nice thing about this here. We can see that one important thing about this, which is really, really strange and something for you to really take to note here, is that the way it's set up like this, it's resolved in this direction. It is resolved right 
to the left here. So that's really important here. When you're dealing with transformations, you're going to be resolving them. When you're dealing with a composition of transformations, it's going to be resolved right to left. By the way, uh, if you've done a little bit of algebra on your own or done a little bit of a, a theory of functions here, the same is, this is exactly the same idea as uh, uh, composition of functions here. So we have this. Now, of course, it can be two or more transformations. So I can stick a third transformation on here. I can say, for instance, a reflection over the line y equals x, and that will be third okay so we can do two we can do three we can do greater chains here now alternately another way of writing this instead if you're more familiar with your function notation instead it could be written like this here and if you're really familiar with uh, function notation then it should make sense here that we're going to resolve right to left why we resolve right to left because you can see we're resolving it from the inside out when you deal with functions you always resolve from the inside out here so this leads out here right we still with this first deal with it, whatever's on the inside and then the result comes out here so when we talk about transformations and compositions we're going to be doing this here okay keep that in mind now let me go back to the original picture here so if we ignored, let's ignore the blue triangle for the time being, but if we take a look at this here, we can look at the black triangle, the red triangle. So I'm going to connect them, right? Notice how a to a prime here, right? We can see that we can connect a to a prime with a line like so, right? And we can connect b to b prime. And we can connect c to c prime here. Now you'll note, interesting that all those points, all those lines here, we connect each point to its image, all seem to converge over here at this one point here, this point being negative one zero. So notice how in this situation, this negative one zero kind of acts as a midpoint here, right? And we can see that you can do the calculations and show that if you connect a to, like a to a prime here from four three to negative six three, the midpoint of that is indeed negative one zero, right? Because four minus six is negative two, uh, divided by two is negative one, three minus three is zero, divided by two is also zero as well. Same is true with be right negative two uh, plus zero is negative two divided by two is negative one one minus one minus one is zero divided by two is again zero and we see the same thing here so that means this point here in a way kind of acts as a mirror furthermore we also note it's the intersection of these two lines here now in this situation it's because of the fact that the i chose happen to choose two two mirror lines that were perpendicular to one another but in fact this point here kind of acts in a way it feels a lot like a, a, a horizontal or vertical mirror it feels a lot like a line here so it's almost like a line reflection except that we're not reflecting over a line we're reflecting through a point here so we can use this idea that this point here this point let's call it q this point q is halfway is halfway in between a point the pre-image and its image we can kind of use that to come up with a definition here of what is known as point reflection so a reflection in the plane of point p over a given point o we define the image p prime to be defined so that o is the midpoint of p p prime so in a way it feels just like line reflection here the only difference in this case is that instead of having a perpendicular bisector which is really fancy we have to deal with a one dimensional object here uh, sorry zero dimensional object here a point to make things a little easier for ourselves in particular the nice part about this is that if we're reflecting over a special point in this case the origin here i actually rewrite it as r sub capital o a reflection through the origin of x comma y you can actually test this on your own by the same theories what we did before here right you can think of it as a reflection zero zero is the intersection of these two axes here x and y just like we did over here so we can think of it as a composition of a reflection over x and the x-axis and the y-axis so however however how you slice it we can see here that because zero zero is the center we can do the same idea here and end up with x comma y this is the idea is now we're just flipping it and turning all the uh coordinates into their negative so you end up with negative x comma negative y